Hey, what's going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today I'll be comparing the Born Primitive Savage One to the Rad One. Both of these shoes have been really awesome, well-rounded shoes for both CrossFit and my cross training. So I wanted to talk about how they compare and stack up to one another because I know I've had a lot of questions about both of them as well. So the first major difference to note about these shoes is their midsole constructions and their stack height. So over here in the Born Primitive Savage One, you have a dual density midsole. So this midsole is a little bit more dense and you have a lower stack height. So it's almost like a Reebok Nano 2.0 midsole in the context of being a little bit lower and being a little bit more dense, or even like a Reebok Speed TR if you've ever worn that shoe. Looking at the Rad 1, you have the swell foam midsole that runs throughout and it has a slightly higher stack height. So with this shoe, you do have a little bit more separation from the floor and you will feel a little bit more of like a responsive feel compared to the Born Primitive Savage 1 that's gonna be a little bit more dense and a little bit more ground feel focused. The second major difference is their upper constructions. So over here in the Born Primitive Savage 1, you have a knit upper with synthetic overlays. You have an overlay over here on the forefoot and then you have some overlays over here on the lateral midfoot. This has helped increase the shoe's overall durability in my opinion. It's a pretty good job and you also have this TPU cut back here to give you additional ankle support when it comes to a lateral and medial context. This material I think does a pretty good job at being breathable but also being heavy enough to be abrasion resistant. Looking at the Rad 1 you have this mesh upper with some suede overlays. This gives this shoe a little bit more of like a street wear kind of feel and vibe but you do have this breathable mesh throughout the lateral and medial midfoot, suede overlay up here and then you also have a decently structured boot back here for lateral and medial support. The upper in the Rad 1 I think doesn't breathe as well as the Born Primitive Savage one. It's a slight tiny difference, but I do think it looks a little bit better. So it's kind of a give or take there. The third major difference to note about these shoes is their widths and how that's gonna feel on the foot. In the Born Primitive Savage one, you have an anatomical toe box. In the Rad one, it's more of your traditional tapered toe. So if you have a wider foot, I think you know exactly which model you should probably go with, but the Rad one is gonna feel a little bit more narrow. And that is definitely something that I've noticed with every single pair I have had. Even if I size up a half size, they still feel a little bit snug. So if you do have a wider foot or if you just need a little bit more volume through the upper and the toe box especially, the Born Primitive Savage one will deliver on that front. The fourth major difference to note about these shoes is their outsole constructions and just their tread patterns in general. In the Rad 1, you have this herringbone tread patterning. This is consistent throughout. It also wraps up a little bit into the lateral and medial midfoot for additional rope climbing support and durability support. And you have this little TPU and rubber overlay that covers the midsole. I like that because it helps boost the shoe's overall durability in the context of protecting that midsole. In the Born Primitive Savage 1, you have this full rubber outsole and you almost have like this fascial like tread patterning. This is kind of similar to what like the Innovate models use. And overall, this outsole has done a good job at being both durable and grippy. And then you have a little bit of a ridge here on the lateral medial side for additional rope climbing support. And it's not super grandiose like in most CrossFit shoes. The fifth major difference is their heel to toe drop. So over here in the Born Primitive Savage 1, you have a four millimeter drop. If you resonated with shoes like the older Nike Metcons and the older Reebok Nanos, I think you'll feel kind of like right at home with this model's heel to toe drop. The heel to toe drop in the Rad 1 is six millimeters. Now, that's not necessarily the biggest deal. However, I will say with the higher stack height in the Rad 1, you do get a slightly more responsive feel and you do have a slightly more pitched forward feeling in this model compared to the Born Primitive Savage 1. I think because this model has a lower stack height and it's built to be a little bit wider, it has a bit more of like this flatter feel to it. So if that's something you're after with your training shoes, that would definitely be something to consider with the Savage 1 versus the Rad 1. But all that said, let's talk about how these shoes compare when it comes to performance. All right, so now which model is better for lifting? I'll be honest, this one's been tough because I honestly love both these shoes for lifting, but I have kind of grown to love one of them a little bit more than the other. So all that said, both these shoes have good stability for heavier training and with their full rubber outsoles, they're good dynamic shoes for all types of lifting. So if you are kind of on the fence, don't overstress that, don't have that paralysis by analysis, both shoes will work really well and be confident in your decision based on the shoe that you're kind of leaning towards already. But all that said, if I had to pick one model that's a little bit better for lifting, I'm gonna give the edge to the Born Primitive Savage one and that's for three key reasons. Number one, with the lower stack height, I just feel like it feels a little bit more natural for like heavy deadlifts and cleans and getting into your setup position if you like that flatter feel in the context of your foot position. Number two, with that lower stack height, the shoe has a good level of flexibility to it. The Rad 1 has good flexibility too, but it just feels like the Born Primitive Savage 1 is a little bit more like minimalist feeling in the context of how it flexes 
flexes and articulates. So for lunges, split squats and whatnot, where you're really digging into that forefoot, I think the shoe moves a little bit better. The third reason is for the wider toe box. I love training with wider shoes. And so if I'm lifting and if I'm going for heavier strength work, I'll typically bias towards a wider shoe. So that's why the Born Primitive Savage one takes the edge here in my opinion. Now, which model is better for CrossFit? So this one's tough because both these shoes have been exceptional. And honestly, when it comes to durability and just overall versatility, the shoes have both been really stellar. Now, what I will say is if you like a flatter and denser shoe for CrossFit, the Savage one will be your best bet. But if I had to give the edge to one of these shoes, I actually think the Rad one is a little bit more versatile. It feels better for short runs. It feels better for any form of like high volume box jump or double under workout where you're going to be on the forefoot a lot. And with its versatility in the context of how it feels with its responsiveness, I think it gives you a little bit more range in the context of comfort too, when you are tackling wads that are very demanding when it comes to a plyo or running focus. So both shoes work really well for CrossFit. I've liked both of them so far, but I do think the Rad one is a little bit more versatile regarding its responsive feel. But if you do like a flatter and more dense shoe and you have a bias towards lifting with your CrossFit workouts, the Savage one is an awesome bet as well. Now, which model is better for versatile training? Both of these shoes work and it really comes down to your preferences with what you want out of your shoe in the context of cross training and versatile training. If you like a poppier and more bouncy midsole, the Rad one will be a good option. The only thing I will say about the Rad one is it can run a little bit hot for longer cross training sessions. And with that narrower toe box, it can feel a little bit limiting to it times, especially if you do have an E with foot or wider foot. With the Savage One, it feels a little bit more minimalist. And so I feel like if you generally like doing like cross training sessions with like barefoot shoes or just shoes that don't have a ton of stack height, a ton of midsole to them, I think you'll feel right at home with the Savage One. Also, I do like, again, that flexibility and articulation with this shoe. If you've ever trained like the Innovate FLY 235 V3, this shoe kind of feels very similar to how that shoe's sole flexes and articulates. Now, which model is better for short runs? That is where the Rad One is gonna take a pretty comfortable win here. This shoe is a lot more comfortable for short runs. The Savage One will work if you're doing sprints and short intervals or basically any form of running where you're on the forefoot. But again, with denser midsoles and lower stack heights, that's not necessarily everyone's preference. So from a comfort standpoint, this could be a knock on the Savage One in the context of running. And so I would suggest keeping your runs to about like a mile or lower in this model or doing sprint work in the shoe if you wanna get the most out of them regarding their running performance. With the Rad One, it's a little bit more of like your hybrid focus shoe. It's more comfortable for CrossFit wads or running. It's comfortable for sessions where you're doing like 800 meters to a mile, even like a slow two miles. This model should feel pretty comfortable for your needs. Now, which model is better for daily wear? Both these shoes can work. And it's interesting because I like the Savage One for its width and its upper volume and how it kind of feels a little bit more spacious and how the outsole does in the context of grip and kind of protecting this midsole. However, I like the Rad One because it is a little bit more plush and it has a more streetwear vibe to it. It. So if I'm trying to go out and it's a little bit more classy in the context of what I'm doing, or I just want to dress up a little bit more, the Rad One would be my go-to. The Rad One and Strike Move and Haze Trainer, for example, are my two favorite shoes for traveling when I can only bring one option with me. So that is something to consider with this model, but both shoes can work for daily wear. I think the Rad One takes a little bit of an edge when it comes to appearance, but the Savage One, I think, is a little bit more comfortable because it's wider. Hey, we got Maui back here, the true shoe dog of the channel. If you have a moment, don't forget to subscribe. Maui would appreciate it. It's what helps put kibble in his bowl. But all that said, back to the video. So when it comes to the price differences of these two shoes, you can expect to pay around $150 for the Rad One and around $130 for the Savage One. Honestly, I feel like the price points are pretty fair for both of these models. With the Rad One, they do have limited drops though, so that can be a little bit frustrating at times. And with the Savage One, they're a little bit limited on colorways, but to be quite honest with y'all, I think both of these shoes are worth their price, especially if you buy them for the right context in which they're gonna perform the best. So when it comes to the sizing and fit differences of the Rad One and the Born Primitive Savage, one. Both of these shoes are size 10s. They both run pretty equal regarding their length. However, there is a pretty big discrepancy regarding their widths. So again, I have an E-width foot. I feel a little cramped in the Rad One at times. And even in my 10 and a half model that I have in the gray colorway, it still doesn't give me enough width. And so what I would suggest is that if you have an E-width foot or wider, go with the Savage One. You're going to get a little bit more of an anatomical toe box. It doesn't have that aggressive taper. And with the shoe, you do get a little bit more upper volume. Now, granted, you can get this bubble of the bottom of the midfoot if you do crank these tight. But in the context of upper volume, the shoe does a pretty good job, especially for wider feet. With the Rad One, it's a little bit more low profile through the forefoot, and it's gonna feel a little snugger if you have wider feet. So that said, if you do have a wider foot, I would suggest going up a half size that you're gonna be your better bet. The 10 and a half definitely feels a little bit more comfortable than the 10. So with my 10, for example, I have to remember to wear super thin no-show socks if I want them to be a little bit more comfortable. But all that said, 
True to size should be the play for most. If you have a wider foot, go up a half size in the Rad 1 or opt for the Savage 1. All right, so now let's go over the weight, heel toe drop, and insole in the Rad 1 and the Born Primitive Savage 1. So for my size 10 Rad 1 here, we have a weight of 12.7 ounces. In my size 10 Savage 1, we have a weight of 11.2 ounces. The heel to toe drop in the Savage 1 comes out to four millimeters, and the heel to toe drop in the Rad 1 is six millimeters. Both of these shoes have thin foam removable insoles, so you can take these insoles out and put your own in. The Savage 1's insole does have a bit more of a density back here from the midfoot to the heel, and a little bit more of a plush forefoot. All right, so now let's do a construction breakdown of the Rad 1 and the Born Primitive Savage 1. So looking at the upper constructions in these shoes, you have a mesh and suede overlay here in the Rad 1, with some synthetic overlays as well. This helps give you additional toe support up here, giving you more durability. And then in the Savage one, you have a knit upper with synthetic overlays. And once again, these synthetic overlays cover the toe box and wrap into this lateral part of the forefoot. Looking at the midfoot constructions of these shoes, the materials are pretty consistent throughout. On the lateral side of the Savage one, you do have some branding. And then you also have these two PU cups back here to give you additional ankle support. The boot itself does have a little bit of rigidity too, and a bit of padding with the mesh internally. Looking at the midfoot in the Savage One, you have five core outlets that go up with a six back here for lace lock, and then you have a thin tongue with an additional loop here. The tongue itself is gusseted, and with this tongue, it can press in the top of the foot. I mentioned this in my full review, so definitely check that out. It could be a little uncomfortable during the break-in process, but it doesn't really hinder the shoe's performance. Looking at the Rad One, the tongue is also gusseted. It doesn't have an additional loop here for security, but the tongue does stay in place for the most part. It can move laterally at times if you're doing any form of lateral lateral training, and then the tongue itself is a padded mesh, and you have five core eyelets going up in this shoe, and four of these eyelets are this internal lacing structure. Looking at the midsole in the Rad 1, you have the swell foam midsole that runs throughout. You also have this additional TPU and rubber overlay that helps protect this midsole. It wraps the entirety of the shoe. You also have an extended outsole layer up here on the forefoot, covering the toe box. Looking at the Savage 1, you have a dual density midsole that runs throughout, so this foam up here in the forefoot is a little bit more pliable, whereas the heel back here is a little bit more dense. And then looking at the outsole in the Savage one, you have a full rubber outsole with that like fascia like tread patterning and some pretty aggressive grooves here in the forefoot and the heel. In the Rad one, you also have a full rubber outsole. It's like this herringbone tread patterning that runs throughout. And then you also have removable insoles in both of these models. But if you have additional questions on either of these shoes constructions or if you need additional clarity, drop a comment down below and I can answer whatever you have. All right guys, that wraps up this comparison of the Born Primitive Savage one and the Rad one. Honestly, I love both of these shoes just for different reasons. And if you've ever worn either of these models, let me know in the comments below why you like your pair or why you like one over the other. If you have additional questions on this video, drop a comment down below and I can help you navigate which shoe you should go with based on how you train. Just give me a little bit of context for what you do every week. But all that said, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always, y'all, drop a like on the video, drop a subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.